All right, this is a video showing you how to investigate the effect of distance on gravitational force. Um, you can tell I've got these two guys here who are holding on to two objects that have mass. And if I increase the mass of one object, then both of them have to pull harder to keep these things um, from moving towards each other. And the force value, you'll notice up here, um, increases and decreases as I change this mass. So we could easily do an experiment um, on the effect of changing one mass on the force. Um, what I wanna show you is how to do an experiment uh, that involves the effect of distance on force, which is a slightly trickier, um, but we can still do it. I'm gonna move this one mass over here um, so that it's sitting at the zero meter mark and I'm gonna move the other mass here so that it's exactly one meter away. Um, then notice I, I reduced the mass of both of these down to, um, uh, down to one kilogram. This is convenient if I want to um, look at the effect that distance is having on the force because I know that mass impacts the force and if I change these numbers to one, then I don't have to think about them. But notice as I increase the distance, these numbers will get smaller and smaller and smaller so that I'm, I'm not using all these decimal points that I wanna use here. If I go out to 10 and nine and eight, notice this is, it seems like the distance is no longer affecting the force when, it's, when it seems like it should be. Um, the way I'm gonna solve this problem is by increasing the mass of both objects to 10, um, which notice is gonna increase the value of um, the force of attraction between these two masses, and I'm still going to get some useful values as I increase the distance. So even if I go all the way out to 10, I can tell it that there is some force there still. Um, one last thing I wanna mention is, uh, notice these numbers are extremely tiny. Um, so if we're actually trying to use this measurement, it's often useful to think about the, um, excuse me, to think about the unit that we're using, not as one Newton, but as one Newton times 10 to the negative three, six, nine, for example. Um, so we can do this rather conveniently by, um, I'll just show you in, with some text here. Instead of just recording this number as 0 0.00000, etc. Newtons, I'm going to record this number as 1.734, times 10 to the negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine newtons. Or um, you could even express this as a um, metric prefix. So this would actually be a nano newton. Um, in this case, nano newton equals um, 10 to the negative nine newtons. So using a smaller new, uh, unit um, will prevent you from having to use all these zeros um, and will give you a cleaner looking graph that's easier to analyze. Um, in any case, you can do it with these small numbers. It just ends up being kind of unwieldy and hard to deal with. Um, you now have a, a clear picture, I think, of how to change the distance um, separating these two objects and use that change to investigate the effect of distance on the force between these two objects.